Welcome back to the Mountain Morning Show, where I could not be more pleased than to have a world-class author here in our studio, and that's Dave Farland. He joins John Goodwin from Galaxy Press. Gentlemen, welcome. Great, Great to nice have to you here. You. Thank you so very much. Be back. Uh, of course, uh, you know we're fortunate to be able to do this because Comic Con is in town, which means mm -hmm. that brings Dave Farland back to town. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Oh, thank you. How have things been? How have you been? Oh, I've been great. It's uh, and it's a great convention. Yesterday it was jam packed in the afternoon, and uh, oh, I expect yeah. it's going to be a big weekend this weekend. Uh, you know, one of our uh, one of the the folks that work here is pretty into the writing part of this, and he said, you know, I literally could spend the entire time just going to writing conferences. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of opportunity to learn from great writers like yourself. Yeah, yeah. This is this affords a great opportunity for us to meet people, and uh, it's a very inexpensive way to meet writers too. I mean, to to learn a lot. Uh, so, yeah. Indeed. Well, one way uh, that we could have learned from you at, at, at the time was uh, at Brigham Young University. You were a professor there, right? Yeah. I taught the science fiction fantasy writing class and discovered a few authors. Dan Wells is, uh, and uh, Brandon Sanderson are both uh, huge now, as is wow. uh, Stephanie Meyer was one of my students and uh, a number of others. So. Yeah, so you've brought plenty of uh, people along for the ride and uh, given them their opportunity to really get a big start. But you continue to do that, of course, with Writers of the Future, and that's where John Goodwin and Galaxy Press comes in. This is a tremendous opportunity for young people or old like anybody who's always aspired to be a writer to have that launch. Exactly. The uh, Writers of the Future was created by Elrond Hubbard right after having released Battlefield Earth and providing a means of a uh, new writer, an aspiring writer for the works to be seen and acknowledged. Dave was a winner in volume three. Mm -hmm. He was wow. a grand prize winner and that's what kicked off his career and he obviously has not looked back since. We've had several other uh, similar success stories, uh, but one thing that makes Dave stand out more than others is that he became a judge and now he's a coordinating judge for right. the contest. So he does look back in that sense. Exactly, and pulls exactly. Some folks along with him. But, but What's really great about this book, too, is that it is, it is the best-selling science fiction anthology that exists right now, and, and what puts the extra icing on top of that really delicious cake is the fact that these are all new writers who now launch their careers as best-selling authors, because this book, when it gets released, because of its popularity, becomes a national bestseller. Wow. So all 12 writer winners and all 12 uh, winning artists are now national best-selling authors, as well as the uh, published authors that are the science fiction and fantasy judges who are published in there also are, once again, a national best-selling author with this book. You know, uh, when you look back uh, that many years ago mm -hmm. to your win, mm -hmm. Talk to me about what that meant then. Now that it's more in a different perspective, I'm sure, at this point. Yeah, you know, it was huge. Um, I, I was a student at BYU at the time, and I was trying to uh, make a little extra money so I could go on dates. And so I decided to <laughs> enter some writing contests. And my goal was to try to win first place in a contest. And I ended up winning first place in six different contests within a month of each other. Wow. And uh, when we went to New York at the top of the World Trade Center, and had had the award ceremony, I won the gold gold award. Uh, I had eight different editors who approached me and asked if I, they could see my first novel. And so it helped launch me big right away. My first book, uh, On My Way to Paradise, ended up becoming a, a, a bestseller, a uh, science fiction bestseller for five months and won the Philip K. Dick Award. And so it really helped launch me in a huge way. Was and it scary to be thrust that fast into the into the game of writing? It, it's terrifying and gratifying at the same time. You know, you you uh, kind of wonder whether you should be there. You've, uh, you're, when you're a new writer, you always have right. that, that uh, imposter syndrome. Yeah, some of, they're gonna find yeah. out I don't really <laughs> know what I'm doing. So, somebody's <laughs> gonna read this and say, oh. <laughs> yeah, anyway, uh, so you worry about that. But at the same time, um, it's very exciting. And I imagine this excitement continues for you when you do get to, you know, look back and help out young uh, Absolutely. Uh, aspiring I've had, authors. I, at this point, I've got uh, at least, uh, I think, eight or nine number one New York Times bestselling authors I've trained and another hundred wow. who are just New York Times bestsellers but haven't hit number one yet. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it, it's really exciting. Um, the contest is judged blind, so when I go through the stories, I get thousands of stories every quarter. The next quarter ends in 
in 10 days, so get your stories in. That's uh, right, get done. Yeah, but uh, last minute edits. But the thing about it, the thing about that is, is that I still don't know who the winners are this year. The way that the judging is done, I don't know who the the winners are until I actually edit. Then then I might find out what their writing pseudonym is. I don't know what their real name is. So wow, uh, it's it's kind of exciting and fun for me too. Well, we know that at least one of those authors is from Utah, which seems to be the case nearly every year. Somebody comes out of Utah. These days, it's definitely, uh, we're pretty much guaranteed a, a winner from Utah. We've had 20 winners from Utah in the history of the contest, which is wow. the top state in the United States, and it's, uh, it's quite an honor to the uh, literacy level of Utah. Yeah. I mean, that's a big part of it. Obviously, BYU with uh, its legacy of Orson Scott Card to Dave Farland and then to uh, Brandon Sanderson as, as instructors of that science fiction uh, creative writing class. That's we, impressive. We consciously started trying to build a strong writing community years ago, and I think we have the strongest in the country, and I think that's why we keep getting winners out of Utah. Wow. I, I need to come take some courses. Did you, <laughs> did you maybe do a little uh, adjunct work on me? Uh, sure, sure. I'll be <laughs> I, happy to. <laughs> I mean, you're emeritus at this point, right? Is that is that right? Or are you I, still teaching I'm actively? Not, I'm not teaching at BYU, no. Yeah. I, I, teach, uh, I teach online classes, and so I have hundreds of students from all around the world at this point. I've got students in Perfect. Japan, China, the United United States, Europe, uh, Park City. Park City. I'll be one of those for I sure. I, I don't know if I've got any from Park City right now, but it could be. Well, we're going to sign one up for sure. Oh, okay. I'm excited about that. I, I got to tell you, this is uh, one of the reasons why you guys are so uh, excited about coming to Comic Con every year because the chance of finding that new next author, mm -hmm. it's for real. It's definitely for real. Yeah. And it's also for real that by doing such programs, working with you right now on, this, on Park City, TV promoting this, people are watching it, and then it's not always the writer. Maybe it's the wife or the, the spouse yeah. know, who will say, come on, you've got what it takes. And we even had one winner who didn't even know he'd entered the contest. His wife had submitted his <laughs> story. Is that right? And yeah. he found out when the contest administrator called and said, congratulations. He said, congratulations for what? <laughs> but she wow. totally believed in her husband wow. as an author. And so some people are very desperate by the time you know, there's like, I've tried and I've tried and I've tried, and it's one of those professions, you know, you've got Kevin Anderson who likes to claim that he's got the record of the most number of rejections of any author. <laughs> Right, but now look earn. what he does. Exactly. I, when it comes to Star Wars, he's the he's the top uh, the top sales earner in, in science fiction. And, uh, amazing, yeah, you know. But also the most rejected on the way there, huh? Uh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. And yeah. so he was he was it was great when we had a Writers of the Future awards ceremony after he had become a judge because he had entered many, many times, but never won the contest. So he disqualified himself eventually by what we call proing out, become a professional um, author. Right. And so he went on stage uh, with an article in the book. He said, I've finally been published in Writers <laughs> of the Future. So he's all excited. Yeah. Yeah. He has a goal he had had for so many years. And, yeah. and wins it, in that sense, almost posthumously as a, yeah. uh, as a, as a uh, uh, should we so say, Brandon amateur Sand writer. Brandon Sanderson entered the contest. Uh, Robert J. Sawyer had entered the contest. Yep. Uh, Sean Williams from Australia wow. entered and won the contest. Yep. Nina Cricky Hoffman, obviously Dave. And, and Brandon Sanderson's going to get published in Writers of the Future for the first time in this upcoming volume. So. Exactly. Yeah. So it happens Fine. again. Yeah. It happens again, it. again, yeah. Well, I want to take a quick break. And when I want to come back, I want to talk a little bit about Rune Lords. Can we do that? Sure. All right. Okay. That, and we'll find out what other things he's got uh, in your future of reading as a writer. Uh, we'll check that out right after these messages. Welcome back to the Mountain Morning Show, where I'm very happy to continue our conversation with author Dave Farlin and, of course, John Goodwin of Galaxy Press. Welcome both of you back. Yeah. As we continue talking, we've got to look at Rune Lords for a moment. This is such a wild, this has such wild appeal mm -hmm. uh, worldwide. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. I, I, I know that that's what the expectation is when you write a book, but <laughs> do you ever really understand how big something is going to be like that? Actually, I do. Uh, I, that just sort of a gift that I have. Years ago, I was asked to help pick a book to push for Scholastic Big, and I picked mm -hmm. a book called Harry Potter that did pretty well. <laughs> right. Uh, and uh, and that's one of the things that I teach with my writing workshops is how to appeal to a wide audience. So, so I actually understand it. But um, you're writing to that audience. But I'm writing to that audience. audience. Yeah. And so wow. Rude Lords has done really well in, in the countries that I thought it would do well in for the reasons I thought it would do well there. So that's good. <laughs> that's great. Where where are some of the places besides the 
U.S. I mean, we always say that we're big in Japan. Where else are we big? <laughs> I'm big in Japan and, uh, <laughs> and Germany and uh, Germany, France, uh, Middle European basically is, is doing really well. I'm uh, just talking to some producers that are looking to do a TV series, kind of a Game of Thrones kind of thing. And wow. We're kind of trying to line up some German partners, and I think that'll be fun and exciting to do. Ooh, that, so, yeah, yeah, that's some real news right here. Breaking yeah. news on Parks <laughs> and Television. That's yeah. great. So, the next big thing. Yeah, in, we'll see in, if it goes, but you know. I hope so. Yeah, yeah. and uh, and then uh, I'm finishing up the last book in the Rune Lords series, uh, book okay. number nine. I'm over halfway done, and I'm going to finish it by the end of of October, so wow. I'm going to get turned in. So we'll have a publication date here pretty soon. Amazing. And uh, you know, you mentioned uh, when we were talking about Rune Lords, kind of the the overall, the overarching uh, representation of humanity. Can you give us a little more on that from your perspective as a, as the uh, as a publisher? Yes, it was. I just recently read it, uh, the first volume, and talking with with Dave, all of a sudden it just came together for me very well. Just how. The, the evil and how the, uh, the rune lords use uh, people to, they gift um, their talents, their skills, whether it's their strength or their, um, their looks, their wit, and so they give it to them. And so when they've, when they've given it to the, the rune lord, um, they themselves are in a, in a room and taken care of because they don't have, if they don't have wit, then they need somebody else to, to take care of them. And the idea is that the rune lord has that to help them to take care of and, and lead their people. And you have the good and you got the evil. And talking about this, it, that's the whole idea of, of finance and economy, how it's, how it's used to, you know, you've got people come and work for a company and they give their gift of strength or their wit right. to be able to expand it. And how is it used? And it was fascinating when he said that. It's just, and it really came to light when the when the economy tanked out. Yeah, I I, I put the book in, and it became wildly <coughs> popular. It wasn't until we had the the big global recession that all of a sudden people said, you know, I've always been a fan of the Rune Lords, but I just realized that that book is about us. And right. Go, yeah. Okay. That's you, you get it. <laughs> I was just writing ten years ahead of you. <laughs> you know, to to think about the fact that you know so many of us at the end of the day, yeah, the world economy is on our backs. Yeah. And then there's a few people who. Benefit at yeah. the very top end. That's exactly. basically mm -hmm. the, the, the the idea. Uh -huh. I'd like to switch that around a little bit. Can you maybe write us something for a, a little better plan? Is that, is that something you could do? That that's Shift the goal. The world? That, that's that's the goal. That's what the final book in the series is about. Uh, is about a better plan. So. Well, I'm yeah. excited to read that. Yeah. Certainly. So <laughs> it's coming soon. Yep. Again, the deadline that you've set for yourself is going to be the, the end of October. I want to get wow. it in by the 1st of November. And we know that's not the only thing you're shopping around. You're shopping yeah. around some new books as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to see what comes uh, yeah. from Dave Farland. I want to thank you so very much. We've got just a moment left. I want to talk about Writers of the Future. Lastly, you've had an opportunity to work with L. Ron Hubbard's uh, actual writing uh -huh. uh, and, and co-published with him or co-written with him in, mm -hmm. in that sense. Yeah. Uh -huh. That had to be fascinating, I'm sure. That was, that was a fun project, yeah. Wow. Uh, I, I did a, a book called A Very Strange Trip, uh, set the Guinness World Record for the world's largest book signing with that book. Oh, and uh, and it, what was fun was that uh, he, he wrote it about some characters that were a lot like a couple of my ancestors, my grandfather and grandmother. So uh, I was able to base a little bit of it on them too. Well, it's uh, it's certainly a lot of fun to see the, the legacy continue. I, I wanted to share some of my favorite stuff. Uh, this last year has really been the illustrators. I've kind of uh, mm -hmm kind of got caught up in that, which is hard not to. I mean, look at some of these works. They're just so impressive. Uh, and, and so not only we celebrate 12 great authors, but 12 great illustrators as well. And uh, these, uh, the, the people who have, have done this work on their own, in their own right uh, are just fascinating people. And so the thing I'm to also, excited to see that. Yeah, and the sure. thing on this contest as well, it's actually two contests. It's the writing contest, which we've spoken about this morning. Right. Yeah. But it's also an illustrating contest. So for any aspiring illustrators who want to be able to have an outlet to, to ex, you know, to explain that they've got what it takes, you know, in the world right. of art, this is a contest they can enter as well. It's free. It's also blind judging, also judged by some of the top artists on uh, science fiction and fantasies uh, world. And the cover of this uh, book. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Larry Elmore, he's just 
brilliant as an artist. He's a judge. Yeah, he was originally the artist of Dungeons and Dragons That's right. work, which is why you recognize the, the, the look of these dragons, for sure. Mm -hmm. That's right. So we've had some amazing um, artists that are the judges for this, for this contest, but it's not just uh, painting, but it's also sequential art, which is like comics, it's uh, storyboarding, it's all the different aspects of art. So when a person enters a contest, while there are certain basic principles that uh, translate across all forms of, of art, um, they can then proceed into various different aspects of art that they want to do. So that's one thing that Mr. Hubbard, when he set up the contest for writers, and then the second contest, the illustrated contest, was established because back in the 30s and 40s, the writing and the artists um, was, was really a symbiotic relationship that yeah. did really well. That's what you see in the Pulp Fiction. We wanted to see stories. that come back because it kind of faded away uh, mm -hmm. with uh, really looking at, uh, you start to think about all the um, uh, the pre, uh, the art that was made, uh, you know, with the hope that somebody would buy it, you know, put it on a book. Now working together again, which is really great. Exactly. And so that's that. what this contest is all about: yeah. to be able to really bring back the arts and also have something as an outlet for aspiring artists with the with the cuts and budgets and stuff like that. Awesome. This is an outlet that anybody who really wants to be able to do it, it's free to enter for anyone. It's international in scope, and we really urge anybody who wants to do it to enter the contest for this quarter and the Ten end of days this year. Away. That's right. It's mm -hmm. the end of uh, end of. September is the end of the 34th year. There you go. Volume 33 right here. You can find it in bookstores. It is a New York Times bestseller, and you'll want to check out all the great authors as well as illustrators, but Volume 34 is coming. We can't wait to see who some of the winners are. We know there's one from Utah, and we're excited to meet them this weekend at Comic-Con, which we'll do. We'll share that with you next week, and in the meantime, we are getting ready to go back outside for some biscuits and gravy, and I think even a good writer can enjoy <laughs> some biscuits and gravy, give them a little inspiration right after this. Thank you.